Picture this, it's a cozy evening, and you find yourself nestled on the couch, the soft glow of the television casting a warm ambience across the room. The year is 1982, and there's a new TV series making its debut, a little gem called Cheers. As the show's catchy theme song envelops your senses, you're transported to a place where everybody knows your name. Do you remember that first time you stepped into the iconic Boston bar? The bar stools, the witty banter, the clinking of glasses, and the unforgettable characters that became like old friends. It was a magical experience, wasn't it? Each episode felt like a journey into the lives of those regulars at the bar, and somehow you became one of them, sharing in their laughter, their heartaches, and their dreams. Perhaps it was Sam's charming charisma, Diane's intellectual quirkiness, or Norm's legendary entrance that left an indelible mark on your memory. Maybe it was Coach's endearing innocence, Carla's sharp wit, or Cliff's encyclopedic knowledge of useless facts that had you hooked. Or was it the heartwarming camaraderie that made you long to pull up a stool at the bar, just to be a part of it all? Now, let's take a step behind the scenes of this beloved show. Cheers holds a treasure trove of intriguing facts that even the most die-hard fans might not know. From the real-life inspiration for the bar's setting to the unexpected casting choices that shaped the series, there's a world of fascinating tidbits waiting to be discovered. So, dear reader, as we embark on this journey through the Cheers universe, get ready to raise your glass to a show that etched itself into the annals of television history, creating a timeless legacy that still warms our hearts today. Cheers to the bar where everyone is like family, and every visit feels like coming home. Let's dive into these incredible facts about Cheers that will leave you with a newfound appreciation for this TV classic. Cheers. Cheers, the iconic 1982 TV series, emerged as a quintessential American sitcom that blended humor, wit, and relatable characters. Set in the cozy Boston bar of the same name, the show was the brainchild of creators Glenn and Les Charles. Its appeal was anchored in its ordinary yet endearing ensemble cast, including the charming bartender Sam Malone, the bookish waitress Diane Chambers, the lovable but dim-witted Woody Boyd, and the sarcastic Carla Tortelli. The show's unique charm lay in its ability to make a bar setting the backdrop for heartfelt human interactions, fostering a sense of community among the regulars who frequented the bar. Cheers was a masterclass in character development, utilizing witty banter, and clever writing to explore relationships, love, and the complexities of everyday life. It revolutionized the sitcom genre by focusing on character-driven storytelling over gimmicks, laying the groundwork for future classics. The show's theme song, Where Everybody Knows, became an anthem of comfort and belonging. It achieved critical acclaim, earning numerous Emmy Awards, and its influence on popular culture endures, inspiring spin-offs, references, and even a bar chain bearing the name. Cheers remains a timeless reminder of the power of laughter and camaraderie in the most ordinary of places, etching its place in TV history as a beloved classic. Loved classic. Loved class. Cheers, Emmy success, and the loss set the TV series Cheers, which premiered in 1982, was a hit show that brought laughter and memorable characters to living rooms across the nation. Here, we delve into two fascinating aspects of the show's history. Emmy nominations and wins, all ten actors and actresses who appeared as regulars during the show's run, Ted Danson, George Wendt, John Ratzenberger, Kirsty Alley, Shelley Long, Ree Perlman, Kelsey Grammer, Woody Harrelson, Nicholas Colasanto, and Babette Newworth received Emmy nominations for their roles. Ted Danson, Kirsty Alley, Shelley Long, Ree Perlman, Woody Harrelson, and Babette Newworth have won. Grammer also won, but for playing his character on Frasier. Cheers ensemble cast was no stranger to recognition. All of its main actors and actresses received Emmy nominations during the show's run, a testament to their outstanding performances. Ted Danson, Kirstie Alley, Shelley Long, Ree Perlman, Woody Harrelson, and Babette Newworth clinched Emmy wins for their portrayals. Kelsey Grammer, known for his role as Frasier Crane, also secured an Emmy win, but notably, it was for his character on the spin-off series Frasier. This achievement reflects the remarkable talent that graced the Cheers bar. A lost set in future plans, sadly, the set used for the bar is no longer available for viewing by the public. In 2006, the Hollywood Entertainment Museum was closed, and the set is now being held in storage. But there are plans in the next couple years to reopen a larger museum where the set will be featured again. 
The iconic Cheers bar set, where patrons and staff shared laughter and camaraderie, is no longer accessible to the public. A Hollywood entertainment museum, where the set was once displayed, closed its doors in 2006, and the set was placed into storage. However, there's good news on the horizon. Plans are in motion to reopen a larger museum in the coming years, where the beloved Cheers set will once again take its place in the spotlight. Fans of the show can look forward to revisiting the familiar surroundings where everybody knows your name. In the world of Cheers, where memorable characters and camaraderie reigned, Emmy acclaim and the prospect of the bar's resurrection serve as enduring testaments to the show's lasting legacy. Gussie, Gussie, Gussie. In 1982, the TV series Cheers embarked on its journey, eventually becoming a classic in American sitcom history. Here's an intriguing tidbit from the show's behind-the-scenes history. George Went, famous for his role as Norm Peterson, had originally been scripted as a character named George. In this early version, his sole line was a straightforward beer. However, the writers expanded and transformed Went's character into Norm Peterson. Interestingly, before this transformation, John Ratzenberger, who later portrayed Cliff Clevin, also auditioned for the role of George. When that one-line role was already claimed, Ratzenberger suggested the idea of creating a know-it-all character, leading to the birth of Cliff Clevin. This fact sheds light on the creative evolution behind the show's characters, and how a seemingly minor role like George evolved into one of the most iconic characters in the series. Moreover, it's worth noting that the departure of Shelley Long, who played Diane Chambers, had a significant impact on the show's dynamics. The writers admitted that they found more creative freedom when Lon left, as they no longer felt pressured to focus on the Sam and Diane relationship. This shift allowed Cheers to become more ensemble-based and explore a wider range of character interactions. As for the actors, Ted Danson, Ree Perlman, and George Went hold the distinction of appearing in all 275 episodes of the series. John Ratzenberger comes in a close second, missing only one episode in the first season. These insights offer a glimpse into the intriguing backstory of Cheers, a show that continues to be celebrated for its wit and charm. It's a reminder that sometimes, unexpected changes in a TV series can lead to the creation of beloved characters and new creative directions. Directions. Direction. In 1982, the TV series Cheers had a rough start. It came in dead last in the Nielsen ratings when it first aired. People didn't seem too interested, and it was almost cancelled during its first season. But then, things turned around. Brandon Tartikoff, who was the head of NBC Entertainment at the time, saw something in the show. He didn't give up on it. Instead, he championed Cheers and helped it survive. One interesting twist in the show's history was when Kirstie Alley joined the cast. Towards the end of her second season, there were reports that the producers wanted to bring back Shelley Long, who had left the show earlier. Shelley Long later clarified that she was only in talks about possibly making a guest appearance, not taking Kirstie Alley's place. So, Cheers had its share of ups and downs in its early days. From being the lowest rated show to getting a second chance thanks to Brandon Tartikoff's support, it's a testament to how a show can turn things around. And that's a slice of the story of Cheers in 1982. As we raise our metaphorical glasses to bid adieu, it's time to reflect on the timeless gem that is the 1982 TV series, Cheers. Just as Sam, Diane, Carla, Cliff, Norm, and Woody found solace in that cozy Boston bar, we, too, have found our own unique connections with the show. Perhaps it's the witty banter that tickled your funny bone or the heartwarming moments that touched your soul. Maybe it was the sense of belonging, as if you, too, were a regular patron at that iconic bar, sharing in the laughter and trials of life. Cheers wasn't just a show, it was a place where everybody knew your name, where you were among friends. Now, it's your turn. Share with us your fondest memories, your favorite character, or that one episode that made you laugh till tears rolled down your cheeks. Let's celebrate the moments that brought joy, camaraderie, and a little bit of Boston into our lives through this unforgettable series. Thank you for taking this journey down memory lane with us. Your thoughts and stories are the threads that keep the spirit of Cheers alive. So, raise your glass once more and share your thoughts. We'll be here, just like the gang at Cheers, waiting to hear from you. Cheers to you and to the enduring legacy of Cheers itself. Cheers itself. Cheers.